right, so we picked up the Coyote uh, single cab F-150 from alignment, and uh, she's driving fine. So they got her all put back in alignment, and you see the steering wheel straight, but take my hand off the wheel. Um, she tracks straight down the road. So everything is, somebody be done said in the video that, oh, you were holding the bottom of the steering wheel. There ain't no way that thing drives straight. Look at that, <laughs> look how long we've been just rolling. Ain't even had to adjust it. I know my knees are not on it. Somebody would be done said the knees are on it. Uh, a little bit of wind noise up here. I don't know if y'all can hear it. So we got to get the door uh, gap right. But uh, man, this one turned out uh, turned out really good. And I'm happy with it. So got a busy week ahead of me. I don't know how much filming I'm going to be able to do throughout the week because we're just kind of getting a race car ready to go um, and trying to wrap up two customer jobs before we go to the dyno. Uh, so a lot of really fast work, not a ton of filming probably. So there's how that little single stage job turned out. Definitely not the best. I really like the headlights. Uh, the hood we decided not to repaint because it actually matches the orange pill level sadly is close uh, to the vehicle. It's still a lot more uh, textured, but it's just so close for the price that I would charge for this job. Um, it's, it's, man, we just can't do, we just, you can't keep doing work for free. You cannot work for free for people. You've got to stop at some, somewhere. And you know, I, spent a lot more time on this than you know i should have i just told ed again no more customer work <laughs> so it's back and forth it's like as soon as i do one an all over and I, I just told ed that basically my whole thing is that i'm just upset with the level you know that it's at the orange peel and stuff and it's just that single stage man like i just i don't know so it's like if people don't want to pay base clear then i just don't want to do it because like i just hate to stress about it i need to wipe these windows down but i just hate to stress and you know have you got to sleep with yourself at night you know you got to be happy with what work you turned out for the, the people and yeah for two thousand dollars and all over i mean you get what you pay for kind of but i i just want all my jobs to be base coat clear coat level like high-end stuff and you just can't do it for the money you can't do it you'll go out of business so i told ed i was like i don't think we want to do any more uh single stage all overs but then watch i'll do another one next week so i gotta get this piece of tape you, off you have to be happy with what you charge the customer for your quality that you put out and i'm just not happy with my quality but i know that if i always fix my quality for the price that i literally would go out of business all right so we got our diesel in and i'm not mad about it at all i think it's just the tie rods so this side i think this tire is just flat this side it's got like a dent in it so it's got like a dent in the fender and a dent in the door but down here looks gnarly but i don't actually think it is you're gonna have to go get some vice grips no just go grab some vice grips real fast um so the tie rod i don't even see it i think it's gone oh yeah it's not even hooked up so definitely gonna need a tie rod, but I don't think the frame's bent or nothing. And the axle doesn't look bent. I mean, axle looks straight for the most part. Like control arms don't look bent at first glance. Now there's not, you know, there's no telling if we won't find any other damage. Um, it's hit right here in the door jam, but not up here where your door hooks up at and not back there where your door seal is. So this is kind of cosmetic right here. So that's really freaking cool because it won't take no work. Now there's not, no telling if I'll find hidden damage behind here, but I think this thing really just took a swipe like this and didn't, um, didn't really destroy that much at all. So the tailgate's got a little damage to it, uh, but the tires are amazing. We're not using the tires though. Uh, definitely got some bed damage back here um, that we'll have to fix. Bed liner spring and bed liner in it. So I mean, this thing is looking really freaking good. Like, uh, to either sell or keep. Man, these back seats are so small compared to the uh, Fords. But we're about to see if this thing cranks. It's like somebody's added the trailer brakes. It's crazy going back to 2004 and uh, not having to factor trailer brakes on everything. But hopefully this thing fires right up and runs. So let's get Ed to put the jump box on her. And we're gonna see what she does here in a second. What's she gonna do, Ed? She gonna fire right up and chug a lug a lug a? Got 24 valve turbo diesel bow wore out shocks come with every dodge truck for free 
bang them. You just. Uh, honestly, I don't know which one's the main battery. This one? Yeah, it does kind of look, maybe. Let's see if these little jump box will crank a diesel. I was going to put both of them on there. Yeah, for sure. Oh, we got some juice. I guess I'm really stoked about this, y'all. I just don't know if I want to keep my truck or if I want to keep the Cummins. We're going to see how this pulls the TKM tomorrow. I really love the looks of my truck. It's not so old. The 2017 versus the 04. Is she ready, Ed? Yeah, let me crank it. You want to crank it? Yeah. Okay, we'll let Ed do the, the honors. He, he gets really excited about some of this stuff. Me, it's just my money. It's either down the drain or not. It should have diesel in it. I mean, if it was running when it got hit, well, we might have to put some in it. it the gauge shows empty. Okay, don't, don't, don't roast the jump box and everything. So let's do this, Ed. Let's, um, let's put the batteries on the chargers, okay? Yeah. And then we'll talk to Darren. For any of y'all that don't know, Darren is my neighbor over here. He's a diesel mechanic back there. Um, so we'll talk to Darren and see if. Uh, if there's any special, there's no fuel tank in it. No tank in it? Oh, see. see if there's anything we need to do before we get carried away because we're not that. Normally they just fire right up, but let's get us some good batteries. Oh man, to be back at work, I love it. I love it. I'm actually to work early this morning because I was laying there and missing work all day yesterday, being at TKM the day before I was here, but I worked on the car all day long. I was kind of really excited to come in today and get some stuff done. All right, so I've got a pretty big train wreck here. So it looks like today is going to be a uh, cleanup day. This Fusion, I gotta do something with it. If you remember, we did the red one um, out front, it's done. So this is Crusher. It's either I pull the parts off, doors, tail lights, anything that unbolts is body parts, pull them off, shove them out back, crush the body, pull the wheels off, pull the catalytic converters off, um, or um, I sell it to somebody else. I have a Jetta out here that we are gonna sell to pedal.com. So you can go and pedal and actually sell your vehicles. Uh, selling this Jetta to pedal will actually pay me $375 as it sits versus pulling all the doors and body parts off, setting them out back, pulling the cats off. Cats aren't probably much, worth much, and then this car's still a little light. It's probably $75 at the Crusher. So let's say the cats are worth $150, that's $75. So is that $225 on the cats in the body if I don't pull the parts off? $375 as is, I don't have to take the cats out. That's pretty good uh, numbers for this situation. Sometimes it works better for me just to dump them and they're, they're willing to take it like it is with no front end and everything like that. That one sold, we wired a tracker into that one. So uh, Eddie took care of that the other day. Um, or no, that's my other one. They got a windshield. The one that's got trackers out front. I can't keep them straight, both of them. That one, I need to get a wheel on this morning so we can move it finally. And then we're gonna be dragging out our single cab, what's left of it. Uh, drag it out and get the bed off of it and then get that thing on the trailer so the car back there in the back on the car hauler this morning i'm trying to get to unbury and we are gonna go crush it for race car money and uh work on getting this single cab out back here so this is the single cab i bought it just needs a bed put on it and a tire um hopefully that's it and as y'all know i have the bed sitting right back there so this guy's got to go to the crusher race car money we're finally done with it we're done with these cars i'm pretty sure once eddie comes in i'll get the clear that we're done with these and uh then we'll crush this one this one we still need parts for uh, trying to buy a whole entire car to fix this because these parts are a little harder to find because of it being a wagon so sadly it's only hitting this corner right here but believe it or not sometimes it's cheaper to buy a whole nother car to fix this than buying just these parts so that's uh that's the wife's job this one right here she bought uh i kind of knew better uh i have experienced these in the past these are good cars got good miles are good little cheap cars but this is a coupe and the parts are very very rare and extremely difficult to find so that's the reason why we have the bumper even though it's got a split in it we are saving it because i can plastic repair that as we went over it on the channel um, but all i really need is a fender and i uh, know she's working on fender and a headlight i have to have everything else i can pretty much repair but she's trying to find them parts so it's like all these back here are waiting 
this guy right here y'all know the story she's paid for so this is what we're gonna be focusing on i think today some this and the cummins out front gotta get this out gotta drag that escape out so i want to get um that guy crushed get this guy on the trailer so we can start breaking this guy down as far as the rear end and all that stuff probably i really hate to let it go but we're literally about to have nothing once the cab's gone so and then the escape's going next because we have an escape <sighs> and my guy right there my single cab if y'all remember there's a spot missing right here this is where my black truck was at this is where my black coyote was at my parts truck i sold the tailgate off of it the tail lights off of it and the drive shaft out of it uh tailgate 500 drive shaft i think 300 tail lights i think 100 so that's five six seven eight nine that's nine hundred dollars made on that and then turned around yesterday and locked in a buy eddie did the paperwork and sold it um as is what was left of it for five thousand five hundred dollars we paid 38 i think for that truck if you go back so i made pretty good on that and didn't do nothing with it i went ahead and let that one go because of our white mistake out front if you remember the one of 7200 dollars in uh that the motor was locked up in so i had that parts truck got parts on it but i let this guy go to free up a little bit of cash flow and like i said we made like three grand on it but now i need a front end for that so now i'm hunting for another parts truck um for a front end from that but anytime i can make money on a unit and not do anything i'm all for it and there's plenty more parts trucks so this one might actually get kind of put on the back burner until i can find a parts truck for it but this one's coming to the front for sure because we have everything for it hopefully so let's try to get these cars moved around this morning it's always musical cars around here a lot of thinking check this little guy out ed got it all together yesterday while we were off playing on the dyno this guy 106,000 miles on this little buick and it smells so good it is so freaking clean I mean, I know these are ugly cars. Somebody put every freaking accessory and chrome trim on it you could get. But man, dude, I mean, for the mileage, man, look what somebody did. I mean, they just put freaking chrome trim everywhere. And the sad thing is if you start to try to pull this stuff off, then you got all sometimes a sticky residue behind it. You got to clean off, so it's just more work on us. But I mean, they come through here and stuck chrome trim around all of this. I mean, they've put chrome trim everywhere. It's all over the bottom. I mean, it is freaking crazy. They've put pinstriping everywhere, all the way around it. I mean, everything that you can stick to this car, they have stuck to this freaking car. I don't know what. This is, oh yeah, Eddie loves this feature right here. The self-tapped uh, carbon fiber pieces. And is that double side tape on there? I, I really would like to take these out real fast with a screw because they shouldn't stick because of it being interior. Why you don't like the look? No, it's really tacky. I'd love to take off as much as we can. Um, that little trim up in here, I'd like to rip it out real fast because it should leave no sticky residue. Okay. Yeah, um, good. yeah, one little pick, it should pull right out. Yeah, there you go. It's just real tacky. Anything that we can... That's fine. That little red, you ain't going to see. I mean... Yeah, I mean, I, I'd love to try to rip all this chrome trim off. I mean, it's all around the mirrors and everywhere, but... You don't, you don't want to get into where you're ripping it off and then you're having to clean up double side tape everywhere, you know. So a lot of it, I guarantee you, would just pull right off with no issues. But also you could pull some of this stuff off and then it pulls the paint off with it. And now we've been better just to leave it alone uh, to begin with. But I mean, look at this, man. They've ran it around the wheel wells. They've ran it through here. It's down around there. I mean, it is so tacky and everywhere that it's just, man, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But it's a clean little low mileage car. So Ed got some nice hubcaps on it yesterday. Uh, it'll look good. It'll do somebody really good. So a little quick piece of info. A lot of people, you know, say about, you know, how they can afford nicer things and not life. This little guy right here, we found in a parts car or a, a car that we bought. We were cleaning out trunk. We found it in there. I put it for sale on Marketplace. It's a glass plaque. I put it on sale for 40 bucks and I've had it on there for a year and a half to two years now. And when the ad's up for renewal, I just renewed the ad. It's just a little click. I have to go through and renew, you know, 20 to 40 ads anyway, depending on what I have for sale on there. And instead of throwing it out, I put it there. Somebody's finally coming this morning to buy it. 
So I only tell people business hours. That way I don't have to deal with no shows or people showing up at my house or scheduling with people. Basically, if you want to buy something, I'll tell you eight to five, here's the address. Then I don't care if you don't message me back. I don't care if you don't show up. I don't care if you do show up. I don't have to think about you again. I gave you the address. If you show up, you can buy it. If not, then oh well. That's kind of how I do my stuff because people nowadays, if you sit around and wait on them, it's annoying to sell anything. You can't afford to sell little stuff like that because then you spend so much time waiting on people. But um, that little stuff, man, I sell all kinds of little crap like that to put towards a race car. Guy next to me crushing a Z28, the Z28 F body. It's crazy. I feel like he should just give it to somebody off of freaking Marketplace or Facebook for the $125 you're gonna get on crushing a car versus crushing a Z28 F body. But to each their own, I guess. So that run got us $186. That's pretty freaking good. It's a nice little race car. Yo, favorite. what a day. What a day. I am beat. So me and Ed's got this truck bed ripped off. Two-man show around here. Ed was pressure washing all the mud out of her. Got that off. So now I think Ed wants to rip on something with the single slab over here. So I think we're going to take this gray single slab. And we're going to try to rip out the old slong bed. Get it out of here. So let's hook some straps to it. We got four wheels on or three wheels on it because this suspension has gone. So what we do is we lay a hood down and a rim and a tire, so the weighted truck sides on it. And that acts like a ski. A lot of times we can roll, take these things right out of here. Just ripping on them, yanking on them like a bunch of freaking hillbillies. So let's see what happens. Yeah, just, he loves the feeling of that Ford 5.0 Coyote. Look at him, look at him. He about to run into the eighty. I was, what are you gonna do? You gonna go ahead and tear it up, put a bunch of ruts in here, bust everything up. Well, yeah, he likes that 5.0 power. He ain't used to it. He's got a Chevrolet. What if 5.0, he gonna be addicted. All right, see what that does. We'll just get it going and then I'll turn the wheel. Now we gotta redo it. All right, so it was still rolling on three. So we're gonna try to. Whoa, 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 whoa. Buddy. She ain't got no brakes either. She ain't got no brakes, Ed, either. Go a little bit more right here to this hill. All right, that's good. Goodness gracious. Can y'all believe that thing just pulled out of there with only three wheels? That's wild. Man, that's definitely OSHA approved. Me and Ed did it again, the two-man team. I'm telling you, we're good with it, man. We are nasty with it. Got the bed off of it with only me and him. And that's a long bed. Got the truck up here, only on three wheels. Now, tomorrow, we still have to take all of these three wheels off, take both doors off, take some stuff out the inside, and we're going to take the axle out and put it for sale. It's all race car money. Put this thing back in its hole. Y'all remember when we first met this truck, IA Harper? two and a half year old bought it actually she clicked by now first truck she ever bought not much left of her it's been a journey you remember we did the blue truck off of this thing now we're doing the white truck off this thing we parted it out actually have a buyer that's gonna buy the coyote out of this thing uh the water pump uh and water pump come off of this for my coyote the header bolts all kind of stuff man it's been a journey i appreciate y'all riding along with me for all these got the bed on her so i'm gonna straighten this bumper out real fast you see this bumper's a little jacked all up so we're just gonna try to pull it back out it's really it's been hitting the front what the issue is see right here it's all dented in and i don't have the truck strapped on the frame rack right now it's just sitting there might have to actually put a strap on it, it looks like but i figured that the bumper would give 
over the weight of the truck. Man, that thing just <laughs> it springs out, but it's just not going to stay. So you got to go out farther than it's supposed to be. But if you go too far, then it will collapse. Man, it just keeps going right back. Then it'll collapse the opposite direction. And then we'll be in trouble. And we got a sledgehammer it back forward. It is, ain't that crazy how much I could pull that out of whack and then that thing just goes right back. Now watch my luck. Eddie's closing up, we're finished. That is nuts. Y'all seen how far I pulled that. Dude, that is so crazy. Like, it's just still not wanting to... I mean, the gap looks decent, but it's the in and out, which this is jacked up, too. Maybe we'll just let that ride. Is that upper cap's jacked up. I think that fender's rolled in right there. Maybe we'll just let that ride. It's going to be a work truck. It's just that needs to be in like that. Maybe Monday we'll drill that on the inside or something and get a zip tie in there. At least the gap up there looks decent now. So I guess that's going to work. So I guess that's going to be a wrap for our Friday. We're going to lock up, go to the house, work on some race car stuff. Got a motor grass for the wife. She's complaining about it, even though it's dead. But we got the bed put on her, the tailgate, wheels, rear bumper. Got everything swapped over, gas door hooked back up, all that stuff. So I decided kind of I was going to clean this thing all up really good, but I think we're just going to wash it really good. It's just going to be a work truck because of just this kind of stuff. You just got rust on this bed and you'd have to repaint that to get rid of that. And you got some tailgate damage right there. So unfortunately, I don't think we're going to really do too much. We're just going to try to sell this one for a little bit decent money. <laughs>